Alright, first you can tell me your name. My name is Alte Brent. I'm born February 21st, 1914, in Poland Lodge. Uh, I'm, uh, my profession is a uh, vive. I was working in, uh, by my father until the war break out. In that time I was 25 years old. And uh, I was a half a year in the ghetto, in the lodge ghetto, what they made. And after that they sent me away uh, to a, a, to a labor camp. But it wasn't exactly a concentration camp, and they they supposed to make a, a, a road from Lodz to uh, Berlin. They called it from Litzmannstadt. Lodz, they called it Litzmannstadt. They named it in a German name. And I, uh, I uh, they assigned me, and they sent me away, and I was there for two and a half years, till 1943. And we worked on the roads, we made highways, all kind of work. In 1943, they disclosed all the camps, the private camps, and they sent us in the concentration camp. But, and, and this was 1943 in, uh, in uh, June. And they sent me to Auschwitz. From Auschwitz, they sent me to Birkenau, and there uh, we were working very hard, all kind of work, just to uh, work. And in 1943, uh, 44, they sent us away before uh, to uh, Buchenwald. From, uh, from Buchenwald there we were a whole winter, also working in uh, all kind of uh, hills. There were some uh, hills and they wanted to make over there uh, those V2 it is factories. And we were drilling there with the dynamite. We have to make holes, and they went and they made inside the hole the factory, but they, they couldn't finish it because of the the end of the war. And they hadn't got a chance to finish. Uh, over there, they make the V2s, the, mm -hmm. but they send it there later to uh, all over to bomb. And, and in 1944, in April, they took us for a for a for a walk. They didn't know where, to, where we should go. So we worked for three weeks, absolutely without food, without anything. And uh, at night, we would sleep at, uh, just on the, on the grounds, on the, on the fields. And, uh, and, and every day, some people got killed because they couldn't go on. Whoever couldn't go on got shot. And in the back, they chase us with dogs. We should run faster. Whoever couldn't run faster got bitten from the dogs, and when they fall down, he got shot. And they put them aside. So after two weeks marching like this, I was so exhausted. And one time we were sleeping in, in a barn at night. So three in the morning, we sneaked out from the barn. We ran in, in the woods. We were wandering there for a whole night. And in the morning, the, the German police called us. And they put us in, in uh, the, to the police stations. In the meantime, from far away, the American troops start coming up in that town. So the police noticed this, so they let us go. They didn't do nothing to us. And later, we, we, went appro uh, we approached the American army, and we went with them. They took us on the, on the trucks, and at the first, the first time, in, the first town in Amberg, it was Germany, Ober, uh, Amber, Oberfiles. They brought me to a hospital where I got sick of typhus, and I was there for a couple months in the hospital. And, that's, and that was the end, and from there I got liberated. All right. Uh, what was the name of the ghetto that you were in? The Lodge. And, and how long were you there for? A half a year, and I was in the ghetto. From when? Just from uh, 1940, uh, from beginning January till uh, till later on, whatever it is. A half a year. And that was the only ghetto that you were in? That was the only ghetto that I was in. Were you in the same town before the ghetto was set up? Yes, I was in the same town, yeah. I was uh, born there, and I lived there till the war. 
When was the ghetto in your town set up? The ghetto exactly uh, it was sent up. Uh, this was in, in April, at the, at the end of April. 1940. 1940, yeah. What anti-Jewish actions were taken before the ghetto was established, including pogroms? They are, they are, they, they usually, they, they, they catch the Jews, they, they took them for work. Whoever was in the street, sometimes they run around, they catch that like dogs, and they have to work a whole day for them, very hard labor, and at night they, they let us go. And the next day, they, whoever was in the street, they, they, they need some workers, they just uh, went around like uh, dog catchers, and they, and they caught us. Whoever they caught had to go to work, and, and they beat them even up. And, uh, and then uh, at, at night, we were lucky that we came back alive. Was this done by the Germans, by the Polish, or together? This was mostly done by the Germans, but the, the, the Poland, sometimes they showed who is a Jew and who is not a Jew. They should recognize. Did any of your family live in the same ghetto with you? Yes, my father, my mother, and uh, two brothers, and a sister. What work did you do in the ghetto? In the ghetto, I didn't do no work because uh, my trade, uh, I had no work to do in my trade. So I didn't do nothing because my trade was a weaver. And weaving in the ghetto, we got nothing to do but that. What was the attitude of the local lodger inhabitants, uh, the people who lived in lodge, towards the refugees that came in from outside lodge into the ghetto? They could do nothing and uh, nothing. Uh, whoever had, uh, let's say, two, three rooms had to take in some people, and they, and they lived uh, all together. Were you allowed to leave the ghetto at first? No. Nobody was allowed to leave the ghetto, except when they, when they took him for work. He had to have a special pass. How big was the ghetto? It's practically uh, like uh, Brooklyn, so big. Was there a wall? There was a uh, bar wires around. What kind of guards did they have at the gates? Regular soldiers, regular German soldiers. Well, they they were German, not Jewish and Polish. German, German, regular German soldiers. Did they have pass systems with hours of entry when you can leave the ghetto? No, nobody was allowed to leave the ghetto except when uh, when they took him for work. So they had special passes that is going to work, and by five o'clock in the morning you have to be back. Did you have any knowledge of what was going on outside the ghettos? Nothing. Were there any radios in the ghetto? Nothing. They took everything away. Were there any underground newspapers or leaflets? Nothing. Everybody was afraid. Did you send or receive letters outside from, from the outside? No, we did not receive. No mail, no letters, nothing. When did you know the truth about uh, the gas chamber? When I, when, I, when I came into the Auschwitz, then I found out later that there is gas chamber. From the beginning, we didn't know, but uh, when I was there for a couple of weeks, then I found out from everybody that the gas chamber, gas chamber there. Did you have any uh, personal or family plans to escape? No, we had no chance where to escape. What did you eat in the ghettos at different times? Uh, we, usually, we, we got from the beginning, we, uh, they, they gave us ration bread. We got uh, some uh, farina, some all kinds of tech, but everything was rationed. What uh, was the size of the ration? Like uh, a half a pound bread for a poison. And uh, every time when they had some farinas or uh, some cashes, a little bit potatoes, or that they, they, they gave us, they have to, actually we have to buy it. Uh, how did they give it out? They give it out uh, for poison. You have, to stay in, you have to stay in line uh, I can, uh, uh, sometimes a couple hours and sometimes a half a day till, uh, till you reach the line. And sometimes when it was you next, uh, it was sold out already. You have to be lucky to get some food. What were the, si what were the size of the living spaces inside the ghetto? But the living space, they, they took like a, the, the, the cheapest... Uh, the, the, the poorest section from the from Lodge. Lodge was, a, let's say, a town from the 600,000 people. So they took this, the cheapest section, the poorest sec section, and they squeezed in all the Jews in that section. And it was very, very tight. Well, how many people were there in a, per apartment? Uh, according to the family, it could be 10, it could be 15 uh, also. 
and they would they, they haven't got where to sleep in the beds they'd lay that some straw sack on, on, the, on the floor and they slept on the floor were there cooking uh, utensils in the kitchen there was a uh, coal stove and uh, whatever we had we were lucky when we had something to cook how about sanitary things like bathrooms oh this was uh, we haven't got an, any sanitary bathroom if you want to go to the bathroom you have to go downstairs in the backyard but was coal uh, wood available for heating very little bit. Coal weren't, weren't available altogether, and we started breaking old furniture. We, and from the furniture, we made wood. From that, we, we made fire to cook. Were there any pre-war political parties in the ghetto? There was no parties, not whatsoever. So uh, there were no parties. Uh, when was the first Judenrat appointed? The, when they made the, 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 the ghetto... The Germans appointed a couple uh, uh, top Jews for the Führer. And then the Führer, uh, they, they, before the war, they were in the Jewish Gemeinde also uh, big men. So they took one and they called him, uh, what's his name? Romkowski was his name. And, and they appointed him, he should be the Juden Elteste. And he was leading the whole time and he, he took the, the, with him. Uh, uh, some people, and, and then they appointed uh, for uh, some uh, ex-soldiers, ex-Polish soldiers, for, for, uh, and they make police, and that's they start running together uh, like a Jewish government, and they gave out later Jewish money also. Actually, it was nothing voided outside, but inside you could buy something for it. Do you remember anybody else who was in the union? No, not, not, ex not exactly, uh, but he was the Juden eldest, Romkowski. What about the Jewish police? The Jewish police was ex-soldiers who came back from the war. And then they got nothing else to do, so they made them for police. In the meantime, whoever was a policeman or a fireman had, had more food to eat. That was the whole thing. About money, nobody cared about money, just to get some food. How many policemen were there? I don't know exactly how many, but, uh, but uh, whatever uh, they wanted to make, that they make, they should, be, they should keep in order a little bit. Were they subject to the Judenrat, or did they rule on their own? They had to listen what the Germans uh, tells him to do. They couldn't do on their own. They didn't if listen they, to the Judenrat. If the, if the Germans said to the uh, Romkowski, to the Juden, give me to, for today 1,000 people, and I, and I send them away, so he, he sent them away, he gave them 1,000 people, and they sent them away to the gas chamber to... They, he, they told him they're going to send him away for work. In the meantime, they came to Auschwitz and to Birkenau, and they sent him to the gas chamber. And this is what uh, went down and so, uh, every, every day. He had to supply them. If they didn't want to supply, he got uh, beaten up. So he had to supply him. And the people had no knowledge that they're going to the gas chamber. They told him that they're going to work. But who controlled the Jewish police? Was it, uh, was it under German supervision? Did the Judenrat control it, or did the Pol Polish police control it? It was all on by the Germans they were controlled. The, Ger the, the German gave them the orders and, and, they, and, they, and they followed it. So after the Lutz ghetto you worked in a, you stayed there for six months and you worked at a labor camp. Yeah. And um, can you tell me I about the, uh, can you tell me um, how you got to Berlin? How did you get on the work? They, they said the, from the beginning that they're going to send us uh, for work just bef uh, outside the ghetto and later they got after the fire after the hours that they will over they will bring us back to our family I, because I got nothing to do in the ghetto I figured uh, I'm going out for work and I will get pay and my parents will have for that money something also in the meantime they took us and they sent us away to Germany which I never saw my parents again from beginning they used to send home money for, for the parents but by a year later, they stopped all sending away the money for the parents because the, the Juden eldest, the Romkowski, had to supply the Germans with people every day. So he first they took those people who, took the, who got money for nothing, like say from us, outside, so you don't have to pay them anymore. Those people they gave out to the Germans right away, and, and they sent them to the uh, gas chamber, and they got killed, so they don't have to pay them any more money. So my parents was from the first... And the first office, but they, they, they got killed because I, I went to, to work and they got to pay for my work to my parents. But they didn't want to pay. 
So they got rid of them from the first ones. So what parts of Germany did you uh, go to and work at? Near Berlin. That was uh, uh, that was ah uh, oh this was uh, that was near Berlin. Yeah, Baylitz, Baylitz by Rappen they called it. And what kind of work did you do there? Just uh, road work. We was digging and uh, and uh, it wasn't. They made a road. So we got to, it's, it's a dirty work, road work. You have to stay a whole day and ship at the ship and uh, uh, shovel and, uh, and, and and dig and that, you know, all kind of work. What were the living conditions like? The living condition, uh, what can I say with the living condition? In a, in a camp like this, uh, yeah, you, they dig, you, have, you brought a little bit close with you whatever you could, and that's why I have to, I have to last with you. But we had a chance, we washed it over. And they didn't give us any clothes, nothing, until I went to the consecration camp. I had my own clothes, what I brought home. It was for three years already. It was like a piece of uh, schmattes, rags. Because every time you have to wash it, and, uh, and it got uh, uh, poorer and poorer. Till 1943, when they take us to the concentration camp, then they gave us other clothes from the concentration camp, with the stripes. And with the sleeping quarters? What did you sleep? In, the, in concentration camp? No, in the work camp. That they had special barracks with uh, double beds or three 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 layer beds, and then one of sleep and one slept on top of the other. Who else was in the camp? What do you mean? Who else was in the camp? Besides you, were the Jews, Jew uh, only Jews, Polish? Only Jews. Only Jews. Only Jews. Only Jews. Uh, what were your relations with the workers? What do you mean by relations? How did you get along with the other people who were working? Yeah, not bad. Between us, we we got along very good. Now. Because everybody was in the same trouble. And how did the Germans treat you? Over there, we had private uh, uh, Germans, uh, not uh, real soldiers in the pri in the camp. So uh, they treat us. They they didn't treat us so good because uh, you have to work and you didn't work so fast. They start beating you, and uh, some sometimes I came home beaten up because he says he don't work enough. If they they called us we are lazy and that. We had no strength to work because they didn't ever give us to eat. So they, they, so they, they say that we are lazy. Uh, if a person is hungry, he can work. This they didn't understand, or they didn't want to understand. Do you remember any of the Germans who were the guards at the work camp, or the uh, leaders of the Germans, no. their name? No, I can't remember. So many years away, who could remember them? Everybody got only in, in mind that they should have something to eat, but uh, who had in mind to remember those Germans? So after you left the labor camp, they sent you to a uh, concentration camp. Which one? First concentration camp, they sent us to Auschwitz. This was in, in June 1943, because they were short in soldiers, and German soldiers. So, so they liquidated all the private ca camps, and they took away the private uh, Germans, but they were watching us, and they take them to the army. So us, they send them to the, to the concentration camp. What was the name of the war camp you were at? Do you remember? That, you know, the trades by uh, by Reppen, trades. There was a couple uh, worked in. Uh, one time we were in Baylitz and then we were Zelchow. There was a couple of them. And then the last one was trades. Uh, how did they send you to Auschwitz? But they put us on on, uh, on railroads, on uh, on cars like the the what they what they use uh, for uh, what I call it. For cows, you know, those cattle. cattle, yeah. Did you arrive alone or with anybody else from your family? I was uh, by myself because uh, I got another brother in, in, in camp. He died in camp because he got poisoned himself with uh, mushrooms. He was working one time in the woods and he picked up some uh, poison mushrooms and didn't know it was poison. And he ate it up and then the next day he died. So I was by myself later. Was there a selection when you came? Every time was a selection. No, when we came to to work, that us our group didn't weren't selected because they say they they becoming as a good workers because we were in Germany and in, in, in private camps. But whoever came later from the uh, from the ghetto, there was a selection. They Did you know what the selection meant? Sure, I knew, but uh, from the beginning I didn't know. But later on, when I was in camp, I realized what the selection is. They, they make blinds, and whoever they showed on the left, and sometimes they show on the right. Whoever was uh, the lucky went to the camp, and whoever was unlucky went to the to the guest chamber. Where was the camp located? 
was located in, in Poland. Auschwitz is, is Poland. And how big was the camp? I don't know exactly how big. It was very big. It was a, a couple miles a camp. And uh, it what was kind? It was surrounded with, uh, with barbed wires and ele by electricity. So it was impossible even. There was a couple uh, barbed wires. So if you run the route from one side, uh, and a couple miles was more wires, so you, you had no chance to run away. What kind of a guard system did it have? There was a, uh, every, let's say, every uh, quarter of a mile was a boot, and, and on that boot on the top was a, 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 a German soldier with uh, machine guns. Do you know when the camp was set up? The camp was set up, I think, in, in, in 1941. Oh, yeah. And do you know the name of any of the SS officers? No, I don't know their no name. Do you know how many Germans guarded the camp? Also not exactly. Were there any non-Germans, like U Ukrainians? Or, uh, yeah, there were some Ukrainians, but, uh, but, but uh, they were Germans, but uh, they were living in Ukraine and in Poland. So whoever was a German and Ukrainian, they, it was there. And, uh, and they could speak that better than the really Germans. What was the size of the work camp you were at? What was the work camp? The one work camp on the on, in Berlin, near Berlin. Oh, that was the size like like two hundred people in, in the camp. That was uh, uh, something like that. Did that have Ukrainian gone? No, over there it was private guys. Just, just German. Just Germans, yeah. Um, getting back to Auschwitz, do you remember incidents? That could be used to accuse individual Nazis as war criminals. Uh, about, about me, I I couldn't make up any because I wouldn't remember even my name from it. Uh, what was the uh, makeup of the inmates? I mean, uh, what were the ages? How many people you know were you with? Were they Jews, non-Jews? Yeah, and and and, no, uh, you know. and the concentration camp. There was a it was a. Was other Nazis, uh, nations also like uh, mostly was Jewish, and then was some Polish, and it was some uh, Gypsies, and uh, some really Germans also because they came from the from the uh, how you call it from the jail. What was a thief before the war, and they were in jail, so they they took them out. And they make them for couples, so they watch us. They don't have to work, they watch us, only we should work. Describe the capos. Were they good ones, bad ones? Sometimes, uh, like sometimes, if he didn't like you, he could kill you, and, and nobody could tell a word. And if he likes you, then uh, it was good to you. Do you remember any of the capos? I, if I would see him, I would remember. I never came back, I should say, I should see anybody. What did the work you do consist of at Auschwitz? In Auschwitz, all kind of work. Uh, we were working. Uh, they were take cleaning out the the, the, the toilets and peer and then throw away all the the dirt from the toilet. Some other work, and then they took us outside, help uh, carry brick, bricks for the to build some houses. All kind of work. What kind of food? Did you eat? The food that they gave us in the morning, uh, uh, coffee, the brot, and, uh, and lunchtime they gave us soup. No, no, uh, the soup was but, uh, when we came home. And when we came home, we got the soup and uh, a piece of bread. They paid uh, like, uh, let's say, uh, half a pound. And this should last for the next day, the piece of bread. So in the morning, we, we had to say, make it in pieces. So what did you do every day, starting in the morning till night? The same thing uh, every day. We wake up. They wake us up very early. We had to stay outside they sh uh, they for an appeal. And they count us. They took us maybe an hour till they count over all the people because uh, the, the, the camp has about 20,000 people till they count all over. And after that, by 8 o'clock, we marched out for work. And the mu music was playing by the gate when we walked out. We should ma ma march it with music. They should. And uh, at night, uh, the music was playing again as we marched in. And then we were stayed, uh, they have to be counted again. If somebody was missing, we have to stay and wait till they find him, 
all the time that what happened to him. Sometimes it took us an hour, uh, two hours, because sometimes in the morning somebody was hiding in a toilet. They didn't want to go to work. So they saw it's missing somebody. Each block, each uh, block, but we were in a, in a block, we were, let's say, about 200. So the, the couple come to people. If he saw his son missing, he have to report that one is missing. So they start looking for him. Sometimes it took two hours till they found him. In the meantime, we had to stay in line. Um, were there people killed? Many people were killed. Some, uh, some people want to run away, they shot him. And uh, some, some people got killed just by the work because the, the couple said they don't work too good. So they, so they start beating him so long till he got until he was dead. Non-German guards killed also? What do you mean by non-German guards? The German guards is killed when... Uh, the German guards watched us only, but the, the couples killed a lot of people. Uh, well, the Germans didn't kill them? The Germans killed if he wanted to run away, so they, they shot him. Were there actions in the camp? Not what I know. Were there attempts to escape? Some people wanted to escape and they caught him and later they hanged him. Then they got him back and, and everybody had to watch uh, while they put down the, the galleries and they hanged him. But there were no organized underground? No, they ran away on their own. One, one time I remember three people ran away and they caught him later. When he came home, there was already uh, everything prepared, the gallery, and we had to stay and watch all the people before we even got supper. And, and, we, and they, they told us that here they run away, and everybody who's gonna run away will have the same the same thing what they gonna have, and they hang them up. Did you talk about planning a resistance? But nobody had uh, had the chance to talk. They was afraid. Everybody was afraid to talk. Even. Did you have any contact with the outside? Nothing. And there was no organized underground for medicine and things like that. Nothing. Nothing at all. Were there any attempts at cultural activity? Like singing, dancing? No. They, who, uh, who had a chance uh, to think about that? Everybody was hungry, was thinking only to get, to get a piece of bread. Were there any children in the camp? Not in my camp, but I know there were some children in a different camp across from my, from my camp. They were came from Czechoslovakia, all families. And they, and they were with the kids. And one morning, all the disappeared. I don't know what happened to them. What camp was this? Also in Birkenau. Uh, did they try to hide children? Some, they, they, if they're twins, they let them go in and they make the all kind of, uh, 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 what's my, uh, the, so we make test, uh, if they have a twins, they wanted to make, uh, um, sex operation? Uh, except that, uh, like proving something. What I said. Written Yiddish. Test. No, they want to make uh, of testing. They took him in for test to see if uh, why, why from where uh, twins come. And uh, later on, they figured that they're gonna uh, come to the world, that, that so they will be able to to have a lot of kids. The Germans, so they wanted to know what kind of. Uh, Testimony, the tests they uh, making the twins. What were the relations between the uh, Jewish inmates? Not bad. Was there antagonism between groups from the same town? Or from groups between different towns? Yeah, it could be, because sometimes from one, uh, from one town to another town, sometimes it's different. So one wants to be a variety. So, why, why, but this is nothing. Was we got along with them. Was your antagonism between the Polish and the Jews? Yeah, the Polish wanted to be on top. They, they wanted to be like the heroes. How about other non-Jews? But no, other non -Jews. Gypsies. We, we were born together with the gypsies. The gypsy was in a different camp, a different camp, but it's the same camp, but then it's divided, you know. Um, did you re ever receive help from other in, uh, Jewish inmates when you were in the camp? Yeah, but whoever, like some inmates Jewish, they had uh, not been in the camp because they had, uh, like they were a barber or a tailor, so they they made a little bit, uh, they, they fixed their suit, they had some extra soup, extra bread, so they shared it with others sometimes. What they do for you? Can you give me an example? 
So they gave, if, if you ask him, give me a piece of bread. So he, he, had, a, he had a nap, so he wasn't so hungry, so he gave it away. Was there any medical uh, attention in the camp? It was there a medical center, but you have to be very sick. They, they, they should take you in. If the, doc, if the doctor uh, said that you're really sick, then they take you in and didn't let you go to work. Otherwise, you had to go to work. Was there any underground medical attention? No, nothing. Um, did, there were no Jewish uh, underground doctors or no German do underground doctors who helped you on the side? No. You, uh, if there were doctors, they were, uh, they, they were, they were there in the, in the ambulance. They were the, if, if you came in, you said you're sick, they examined you. If they say you're sick, you, you could stay there and, and not go to work until they say you're okay. What kind of clothing did you wear? Where? In Auschwitz. In Auschwitz we wear uh, concert clothing. It was with stripes. Blue, white. Everything was in stripe and round heads. Also stripe. And what were the sanitary conditions? So, so. How could it be so good? Uh, if it's uh, so crowded and everything, uh, it, couldn't, it, can, it can't be so sanitary. Did you ever receive any mail from the outside? Nothing at all. Did anybody in the camp ever Nobody. receive any mail? Nobody. So but the, Pol the Polish people got packages from their parents, but Jewish is not al weren't allowed to get anything. So when did you leave Auschwitz? Auschwitz, I left in uh, 1944, uh, November, and they sent us to... Uh, Buchenwald and then to Ordruf. And there we were a whole winter. And in 1944, in April, they took us for a march because uh, they didn't know where to, where to take us because the, the Americans from one side and the Russians from the other side, they started squeezing in. And they took us for a march for three weeks like this. Why did they take you out of Auschwitz? Because the, the Russian came alone. They heard that the Russian came alone. So they, they took us all the... All the all the Häftlinge they took out, took out and, um, and they wanted to, to keep us in a different camp, but they, they had no place where to put us. So when did you arrive in Buchenwald? Buchenwald, I arrived uh, in a couple days. They took us by train, and the train took a, topple, a couple days till we come there, because it went very slow, and then they, they had no open lines to go. And then we were there for a whole winter. For a whole winter. And uh, did you you did you arrive alone, or was anybody with your family with you? No, all all by myself. What happened to your family? My family, as I said from the beginning, uh, the the Juden uh, the Romkowski sent them away for a transport because uh, the Germans wanted from him every day some other people. So my parents were the first one to send away because they got money from me. So they were the same, but they got the. Uh, Finished off. Was there a selection at Buchenwald? Never a camp was selection before the people come. And by this time, did you know what it means? No, when I came into Buchenwald, there was no more selection at that time because I, I was from the camp. When the new people arrived, from not, from, not from a camp, then they were selected. Because, because we were already from a camp, like from Auschwitz, they didn't select us anymore. Where was this camp? This was in Germany. But I don't know exactly where, which part Germany. How big was the camp? Very big. It was a couple miles big. What kind of guard system did it have? The same way the German, German SS. Do you know when the camp was set up? No. Do you know who the commander was? No. Do you know any of the names of the SS officers or men? No. Do you know how many Germans guarded the camp? I don't know exactly. Were there any non-German guards, like Ukrainians, Lithuanians? It was Ukrainians, yeah. They wore different clothes, uh, like black clothes, black SS. Do you remember any incidents that could be used to accuse the SS as Nazi war criminals? Yeah, one time um, a friend of mine uh, says he wants to, uh, to go out and make uh, duty. So he went there, but uh, while I was sitting, the guard shot him, and then later the guard said that they didn't ask him. Do you remember the name of the guard? No. Was he German? Yeah. German as well. What was the composition? What was the makeup of the people in the camp? What do you mean by were they Jewish? Non-Jewish? That was all mixed. 
all mixed, including numbers, uh, age, yeah. sex, yeah. women and... No, no, women separate. Only women. Men. Um, what did the work consist of? Uh, what kind of work did you do? The same way, all kind of different work. We don't know exactly what kind of work. One time you work by this, one time uh, you work by the road, one time the the they were, were ammunition there in the factories and we start, we have to sort them. There's all all kind of all, all kind of work. What were the capos like? Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Accordingly. What well, was lucky was alive. Can you describe some of the capos? It was very tough they were, that's all. Very tough and, and brutal. Brutal. What were the uh, what was the food like in Buchenwald? The same way, soup, and black coffee and a piece of bread. And what was the daily routine like? You had to get up in the morning. Uh, the same way uh, you have to be counted for an appeal, and then you go to work, and, and then when you come home, you have to stay again in the line for the appeal, and then you receive your bread and uh, for your soup. And then you have to go. You have to stay in the block. Were there people killed? People. People get, got killed every day. By the gods, I mean. Yeah. Do you know how? Sometimes they, they, they couldn't work, so they started beating them. Sometimes they just fall down and they collapse. Whoever was sick and they couldn't, they couldn't go to work, it was staying a couple of days in, in, that, in that hospital, they took him out and they put him in the gas chamber. They gave him a chance only a couple of days or a week. After that, when they, they, and they, when they selected in the, in the hospital, they came in to select only Jews. Other, other nations they didn't select. Only Jews, they, they said we should stay in the line. And they start asking how long he is in the, in the hospital and how long he is. And, and they marked it down the number. The next day, they called up the numbers and they sent them in the, in the gas chamber. So who did the shooting, the Germans or the uh, Ukrainians? Where? In the uh, camp, whoever was there, they didn't shoot. Uh, at that time, they, if they send it to the gas chamber, they don't have to shoot. They just put it in uh, in the chamber, and they instead of war, they came in gas, and they got uh, gas, and later they got burned. Were there actions in the camp? No. Were there attempts to escape? Everybody would like to escape, but they, they had no chance to escape. Was there an organized underground? Nothing. Also, you take this out. But this is for Buchenwald. That's the same way, but for you. So there was no planned resistance? And there were no contacts with the outside? No. Were there any attempts at uh, cultural activity? Nothing. Were there any children in the camp? No. What was the relations between the Jewish inmates? Not bad. There was no antagonism between the different cities and towns? No. Was there antagonism between the uh, Polish uh, and the Jews? Yeah, it just was a difference. And between Jews and other non-Jews? Yeah. What kind of anti? Because uh, they, they showed a little uh, anti-Semitism. In what way? In everything. Uh, if, they, if they could steal your bread, they stole your bread. One from the other. If it didn't watch out. If you didn't eat right away your portion bread, uh, they, they might steal it from you, and, you, and then you had nothing. Did you do anything to try to counteract this? Pardon? Did you do anything to try to steal the bread from the non-Jews? I didn't, no, not me. I didn't try to steal, I, I, I was glad I had my portion, that nobody takes away my portion. Did you receive help from your, you know, the fellow inmates in the camp? So once in a while. Well, what do you mean? Give you that detail. Sometimes they, I, if I ask, I got a piece of bread from somebody who had a lot. Whoever had a chance, of, uh, if he was a if he was a barber, he shaved up. Uh, somebody was working in the kitchen, so he he got extra some extra food, so he, he shaded me sometimes. When you were in the camps, did you ever get sick? I was one time sick, and uh, a, a tooth was hurting me, and I got swollen face, so they sent me to the at the hospital. We're in Auschwitz? In Auschwitz, and, uh, and then I started taking out the tooth. They cut me the, cut, they cut me my face, 
Mm. And then later on, about the selections, I asked the doctor, I said, I want to go to work, even if it wasn't healed up. They, they, and I said, I want to go to work, so they let me out. Otherwise, I would be, uh, be selected to go to the guest chamber. So I didn't want to stay any more longer. So uh, was there any medical, was there any medic medical uh, attention in Buchenwald? Did you get sick in Buchenwald? Yeah, uh, if you got sick, uh, you, you had a right to go to the doctor. If the doctor said you're really sick, then you didn't go to work. So it was the same setup as in Auschwitz? The same setup, yeah. The st they, they work all on the same basis. Was there any underground no. doctors in Buchenwald? No. And uh, were there any German doctors who helped the Jews illegally in Buchenwald? No. Uh, what kind of clothing did you have in Buchenwald? The same clothing that we had in Auschwitz, with the stripes. And was the sanitary conditions the same? The same thing. And you never received any mail? No. And did you ever know anybody who received mail? The Pollocks, they received, uh, but Jews didn't receive nothing. Even at Buchenwald, the po Polish received mail? Yes. And what happened when you left Buchenwald? At that time, uh, we went to Odruf, and from there, they took us on the, mar on the march. Well, well, where was Odruf? Odruf, it's... Uh, It's a part of Germany and a different part of Germany, I don't know exactly where it is. Was that a camp? Yeah. What kind of a camp was it? It was a camp and, uh, and, uh, and uh, they made over there uh, ammunition. There was a camp but they worked out ammunition and, um, privately. How long, bunkers. how long did you stay at that camp? A whole winter. Um, how long did you stay at Buchenwald then? Buchenwald, we only stayed a couple of weeks. Oh, I see. What type of a camp was, uh, what was the name of the camp again? Ordruf. What type of a camp was Ordruf? The same kind like the other, ki the other, the other camps, no difference. Same kind of. You had the same kind of guard system? Yeah. Do you remember the name of the uh, commander of the camp? No. Or any of the SS men in the camp? I have not prepared them. Okay. Okay.